Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Board of Trustees uh, meeting tonight, our public session agenda. It is February 11th, 2021, and the time is 6.12 p.m. Uh, we'd like to call this meeting to order and begin <coughs> with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, and justice, justice for all. Thank you. We'll uh, begin tonight's meeting uh, with notice, uh, noting our employee of the month. And the employee of the month uh, this month is Dennis Chuppy. Uh, Dennis is a member of our fire department. Uh, he is the village fire department administrator, and he has been with Southampton Village since August 1st, 2007. So he has served us quite well over a very long period of time. And we just wanted to read a quick anecdote from our chief of the Southampton Fire Department, Alfred Callahan, and he says the following. Dennis has been an employee with this village for over 13 years. Never before has our department seen the challenges faced over the past year. Our department has had to reinvent the way volunteer fire departments are managed and administered. Dennis is a major part of that here. Over the last year, Dennis has seen his workload double and has had to maintain flow of information and administration uninterrupted, regardless of the challenges of COVID-19 through our way. Dennis has been instrumental continued service of our department. And because of his hard work and unwavering dedication, we have seen no interruption in our services. Nearly all fire districts are managed by a full-time staff of house personnel, secretaries, treasurer, and clerical support. Dennis must fill all these positions, plus more being the only employee at the firehouse. Recently, Dennis also became a volunteer member of this department, dedicating his personal time outside of work to the Southampton community as a member of the fire police company. Dennis adapts every two years to a new chief of the firehouse. However, he is the constant backbone behind the scenes that makes this department function. He does this with no complaints and a devotion to his job we need to encourage and recognize. So congratulations, Dennis. It's always great to see Dennis in Village Hall. Uh, Dennis also has a great voice and we're always proud and happy to see Dennis around. So thank you, Dennis, and congratulations. Congratulations, Dennis. The next portion of our meeting is the board presentations and we have an ethics committee annual report to the board uh, by uh, Reverend Pfeiffer. Is he available, Charlene, or do you have a report that you'll read on his behalf? Um, actually, he was going to present the report. Kat, do we have him as an attendee? I don't see him. Um, if you'd like, I could just read the report. Not that long. <laughs> there's a, there's a, somebody in has a phone number. Does anybody know his phone number? No. Um, I know that there's somebody speaking on behalf of the, there, there's two people that wanted to speak on the public hearing that's on next on the agenda. Right. Okay. I don't see him in. All right. So I'll just read the report. A uh, report of ethics committee to the village trustees for the year 2020. My name is Stephen Pfeiffer and as the newly appointed chair of the village board of ethics on behalf of our other members, Christian Pico, Teresa Melhondo, um, Mylene Michelle Guerrera, Mimi, <laughs> and Vincent Skorbeski, I uh, submit the village trustees this report for 2020 as required under chapter seven, article four, section C, uh, J of the village code. Summary of activities in 2020, the ethics board held its four mandated meetings, adjudicated two cases, helped coordinate ethics training for the village employees and administrators, received and reviewed required yearly financial disclosure statements, alerted chairs of boards and committees on the need to, to find persons willing to serve as alternates, and began reviewing the 2009 draft of the Village Employee uh, uh, Policy Manual. Recommended changes to the text or administration of the Code of Ethics. The videos and slides of the most recent ethics training should be made available to new employees to be reviewed within 60 days. Official in-person ethics training should be scheduled at least once every two years communicate, to communicate new interpretations and precedents of a applicable municipal ethics law. 
Advisory committees are exempt from submitting financial disclosure statements. We believe this should apply as well to the planning commission who also provides a, an exclusive, as an exclusively advisory function. Part three, general recommendations. The selection of alternate, alternates to serve on land use boards remains an important priority, especially for the Zoning Board of Appeals. So the quorums can be maintained in the face of recusals, absences, and abstentions. The village trustees are invited to advertise for candidates to be interviewed to replace Vincent Skorbinski, who will step down from the ethics board as soon as his replacement is found. Part four, closing remarks. We extend thanks to Linda Gessiford for her years of service to the ethics board and to Christian Pico, who while still serving needs to be recognized for his indispensable service as chair over the past four years. In addition to overseeing the revision of the ethics code and the propagation of the highest standards of responsible and open service to our government or to our community. Ethics is the study of, our, of the oughts of relationships and responsibilities. As members of the Ethics Board, we are proud to continue our work with the employees and officers of our village to explore, clarify, and support how we ought to conduct our, responsible, our, our responsibilities to ourselves, to each other, and to our environment. With that goal of, uh, with, with the goal of an even fairer, even more just, diverse, and merciful village of Southampton. And to conclude, please help address the needs of that, that the ethics committee has for a new member and that the land use boards have for new members to serve as alternates. On your behalf, uh, thank you. And, uh, and on and behalf of the Village Board of uh, Ethics. So that was the report, the annual report that is required. Thank you, Charlene. We see um, the Reverend here now. And um, would you like to, uh, to say anything, uh, Charlene? Uh, read and summarized your report, but if there's anything you'd like to add, we'd love to hear from you. And by the way, thank you very much for chairing uh, the committee. It's uh, a lot of thankless uh, work that you do and, and thank you for being at our meeting tonight, Stephen. Well, thank you. And just want to add one thing at the end. We would like to suggest that the village government website could have a, select, a section dedicated to called opportunities which would uh, include the jobs open on boards and committees, as well as a brief description of the purpose and duties of each board and committee so that the general public uh, knows what they do and knows if there are any um, openings that they could apply for. Uh, I think that would be a useful thing to have uh, up on our village government website. Transparency. Transparency in government and all that. And uh, that's all I have to say. I, I, uh, I was here from the beginning, but uh, I just appeared magically about a third of the way through the uh, reading of my report. I, I apologize. It's not your fault. Thank you very much. We all uh, kind of appeared a little late at this meeting tonight. So, uh, so thank you. We see uh, Sheila in the background too. So Sheila, thank you very much for being in attendance tonight. And we'll definitely make sure we incorporate your suggestion about the village opportunities on the website. We'll get going on that uh, as soon as tomorrow. So thank you very much. And uh, feel free to uh, you know, stay for the rest of the meeting. Um, we can put you back in as a, um, a viewer and uh, as participant, and we can move on to uh, the next portion of our meeting. So uh, thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you. The next portion of our meeting is the public hearing. So I would like to make a motion uh, to open the application of 71 Hill Street LLC requesting a special permit for a transient hotel and workforce housing pursuant to section 116-5 of the village code for the property located at 71 and 91 Hill Street, Southampton, New York, Suffolk County tax back num numbers 0904-06.00-01.00-07 and 0904-06.00-01.00-008-000. So uh, that's my motion. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it looks like there's um, some uh, residents here who would like to uh, participate in uh, this public hearing. So we'll begin with some of the, uh, the comments from our residents. If there's anyone who'd like to come in now, please yes. raise your hand. We've got Linda Riley and Rob Radian 
I think we'll go with uh, with Linda first as she's the uh, attorney in the project and then we'll go with uh, with Rob Brady and thank you everybody for attending this public hearing. Okay. Here she comes. Hi Linda, you're muted. I will ask you to unmute. Linda, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a camera button? Can you put your camera on? Here, I'll ask you to start video. There you go. Um, okay. Go. That should be, okay. Hi, I am uh, Linda Riley. Uh, I am uh, representing 71 and, Hill and 91 Hill. Those are two different LLCs that own the property uh, at 71 Hill Street and 91 Hill Street. Uh, this is a continuation of the hearing. So uh, I'm going to trust that you're familiar with what the project is. I really wanted to address some procedural matters as much as anything today. Um, I have dropped off today an EAF part one for the CEQA review and also uh, proposed plans uh, it, that show both the existing conditions and our, our proposal at this point in time. Um, the procedural aspects that I wanted to discuss with you include um, the, uh, a number of different things that are going on here really. One of them is the discontinuance or the proposed discontinuance of a portion of Viridian Way which has certain requirements under New York State Village Law 6-612 and 6-614, and 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 which um, the abandonment of the portion is important to this this overall project, so it needs to be addressed as part of the whole uh, process. We also have the special exception permit. Uh, which uh, the mayor just read the notice of public hearing for. And then finally, there's, there's another component of the project, which is some reconfiguration of the parking on 91 Hill Street. Uh, 91 Hill Street, uh, we're not planning on proposing any change to the buildings or the use at all. It's um, largely a a question of reconfiguring the parking lot only. The same number of parking spaces will be retained, but they'll be in a different layout. Uh, it'll be subject to planning board site plan approval, of course, and possibly also a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals because the code has a provision that does not at the moment allow two swimming pools on one lot. Um, what, what ties all of these together is, is um, the first of all, the requirement under the State Environmental Review Act that uh, there is an environmental review of these of this whole proposal all at once, because uh, the CEQA State Environmental Quality Review Act basically discourages segmented review or review that looks at one part of a project at, at one time. Um, so I, we have submitted the EAF part one, which sort of kicks off, if you will, the um, secret process. And one thing that we wanted to accomplish tonight was to ask uh, you as the board of trustees, because you have really the fundamental jurisdiction over the most important parts of this project, which are the special exception permit, which is your authority under your authority, and the discontinuance of the portion of Radian Way, which is also purely under your authority. Um, it made sense to us that that you might assume lead agency status. Um, so we are asking you tonight if you could, uh, if you are willing to ass assume lead agency status and if you'll coordinate it with the other uh, agencies involved so we don't have uh, a segmented review going on. 
Um, we believe that this qualifies as an unlisted action pursuant to CICRA, but uh, we have provided you with a long form EAF that is used uh, for type one actions or unlisted actions. And, uh, you know, we, we know you will uh, review it and make your own determination there. Um, so please uh, consider that as a request fundamental tonight to circulate the uh, EAF and um, coordinate lead agency status. Um, we have, uh, of course, um, the proposal in front of you, which has been discussed, but not uh, specifically noticed for a hearing, the partial discontinuance of a portion of Viridian Way. Um, I can speak to more on, on uh, what that involves, but I have, I do wanna point out that I have submitted a formal petition to the Board of Trustees, which I believe you all have, um, which provides you with the meets and bounds legal description and the legal basis for which we're asking for this partial abandonment or discontinuance of a portion of the road. And um, the state law on that requires uh, a, a public hearing that is specifically published and noticed. So we are also asking you tonight to publish prior to your next meeting, a notice of hearing specifically on the discontinuance of a portion of Radian Way so that um, we make sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's dotted. Um, I have, um, I'm, I'm happy to go into more depth on our application, our proposal, uh, how we meet the criteria of the special exception permit and, uh, and, and on the discontinuance of the road. But since we're asking to uh, have these procedural matters addressed so that everything is done correctly, um, I'll, I'll wait and see if you have any questions um, and, and ask you to put it over for the next meeting. Although I'm happy to address any aspect of this application with you. Thank you, Linda. Do any of our uh, board members uh, have any questions for, uh, for Linda tonight? Mr. Right. The Mayor, uh, Ken Gray here. Uh, I'd like to ask Linda a question if I may. Please, thank you very much, Ken. Great, thank you. Linda, good, after yes. good evening, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good, I know you had been working with Brian uh, on this project and you know, uh, as I've said a couple of times, I've been the village attorney for about 10 minutes now, so. Uh, um, so I just want to be clear on, on what you're asking is you're asking this board uh, this evening to declare itself lead agency. Uh, and I think it's appropriate to um, also identify this as an unlisted action. Is that, is that what, is that one request yeah. you have for tonight? Yes. Well, what I, I mean, as I understand it, lead agency status should be coordinated with the other involved agencies. The other involved agencies are, are listed on our EAF. They include the planning board, which is doing site plan approval and, and certain other boards. Um, but so it should be coordinated. Generally speaking, the, uh, in my experience, the board that's seeking to, uh, to take lead agency status usually does the coordination, sending it out to the other involved agencies. Of course, asking, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just to see if anybody objects to say no, I, I think we're right. better suited to be the lead agency. Thank you. I, I understand that. Um, so obviously, it's your understanding that tonight, what we'll simply do um, at the end of this presentation and any questions from the public is actually continue this public hearing, but then re-notice it uh, for the for all intents and per for all purposes. Uh, like you said, the special exception permit and the discontinuance of the uh, dedication of the roadway. Right, um, and it could be folded into a secret hearing also. Very well then. Okay, I just wanted to be clear that we're, we're on the same page. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll hand it back to you uh, if you want to see if there's anybody else who wants to be heard on the public hearing. Thank you, Ken, that was very helpful. We uh, really appreciate that. Uh, we do have three more hands, so we'll, uh, 
we'll move forward with uh, with Rob Veradian, uh, and then we'll go to uh, to Didi, and then Linda, if you can just kind of maybe stick around and, and help yeah, us, of course, with additional questions because I'm I'm sure they will come up. Of course, uh, Jacob third. All right, there he is. How you doing, Rob? Mr. Mayor, just in case uh, anyone wants to see it, I do have the proposed plan up on my screen so I could share it if anyone would like, to, if, you know, anyone who's speaking would like to take a look at it. I think that could be helpful. Maybe we'll have, we'll let Rob, um, you know, uh, give his commentary in the public, uh, public portion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe when Didi uh, takes, uh, takes over, we can put the, uh, the, the rendering up. Okay. Thank you very much, Charlene. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me, Jesse? We can hear you. Welcome. Terrific. Well, thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak. Uh, most of you know me, uh, but those who don't, I'm Rob Varadian. And <clears throat> by the way, a background, a resident of Southampton Village, a treasurer and executive committee board member of the Southampton Arts Center. And our family owns also a, a retail building on Main Street uh, where J. Crew was uh, formerly um, my day job is a principal in a real estate investment management firm where we invest a lot of, in a lot of development across the country and across like 17 markets, primarily in residential, both in housing uh, subdivisions and master plans, as well as urban markets. Our Brazil operation, though, does own about 30 hotels, and we developed a five-star hotel in uh, Sao Paulo. You know, initially, I was asked to give input into this matter about five years ago by the board um, as the public street of uh, Viradian Way was named for my father, Moon Viradian, who for many years of service to the village in such capacities as chairman of the planning board. And this street was being essentially eliminated except for a, a tiny portion up front, which was to serve as a driveway essentially uh, to the Southampton and um, fortunately, you know, as unlike the press indicated, the street was dedicated while my dad was still alive and it was something he was extraordinarily uh, proud of. Um, but what began as emotional interest in this matter uh, really led me to study it more, including the history of Iradian Way in the general area, which was located and realize, and I really wanna to speak to you more regardless of the name on the street as a village resident, a stakeholder, because the developer's plan, I believe um, from, experience, from experience in the real estate business, as well as living in the village my entire life, this, the developer's plan has six, some significant issues to it. You know, just stepping back, you know, generally I feel that a four-star hotel would be a great benefit to the village overall, whether at this site or, or another site. Um, but a four-star hotel is not just a really nice room, but it really presents an overall experience to the guest, including great amenities, such as a great fitness center, including a spa, a destination type resident that would really serve not only the hotel patrons, but all the Hamptons and really high-end service with an experienced operator. That's not really what you have here. You know, the Southampton Inn, is a two and a half to three star hotel with a cafe embedded in the hotel that I believe only serves breakfast. And the owner's plan is really to effectively Frankenstein an additional 47 higher end suites to the existing 90 uh, room, two and a half, three star infrastructure, really sharing the same arrival, service, pool and dining with the Southampton in guests and not really create a separate four-star experience at all. This plan really, it doesn't, it's not typically done to do that because it really doesn't work. Um, there's also a question as to use. You know, Southampton is a seasonal market and really adding another 47 rooms to 90 rooms, you're gonna have one of the largest hotels out here without any true amenity base or draw. And you could be seeing a lot of empty rooms off season. I mean, a comparison would be Gurney's Inn, which is on a beach, has a, a phenomenal restaurant, spa facility. Um, 
but this would be a you know 147 uh, room hotel you know with an off season you'll probably see a lot of empty rooms so there was a question also as is to is the use actually viable you know i'd also like to address some of the design elements and then some of the planning considerations if i may you know the design of the new building is really a several hundred foot row of attached bungalows with a single story uniform elevation with the Southampton in brick painted white to match it color wise. You know, this is probably the most inexpensive way to design a property like this as there's no elevators, corridors, which create inefficiency um, um, and, uh, and the such structural items is probably uh, cheaper, but the look of this will be really uninspiring, more like a, a travel um, motel. Um, the third issue I really want to bring up, in addition to some of the uh, use and design considerations for what the, uh, the developer is doing here, is really the elimination of Viridian Way, except for a small portion at the front, which really serves as a driveway into the inn and attachment to parking for hotel guests uh, behind the one existing building, which won't be touched as indicated, and the one plan. Uh, Didi basically um, made the ask to the village that the village give a public street to a commercial for-profit enterprise for free, basically, for what is an essentially an aesthetic benefit only for her guests. The street itself um, has major potential here to become a significant component of the master plan in that area. It is the only street north of Hill Street after Windmill Lane all the way to Breeze Lane with the potential to fit into the street grid uh, in that area north of uh, Hill Street uh, for additional traffic circulation or secondary access into Windmill Lane or even into the movie theater parking area which may be redeveloped or serve as village auxiliary parking or both. Your planning commission itself in their review of this plan, I think uh, late last year, mentioned that the street was an asset to the village and should be studied as part of the overall master plan for the area, including the movie theater and not in isolation. A couple more, you know, I, an independent, I wanted to bring up also, in addition to your planning commission comments, an independent study by the village when this plan first came up five years ago, recommended, quote, that the planning board consider the long-term planning consideration for alternative access between Hill Street and the roadways to the north. While there are no current plans for such a connection, this was done about five years ago, there may be circumstances in the future which would benefit such a connection. The permanent abandonment of Viridian Way would render this option virtually infeasible. Your board predecessors also took this into consideration with Viridian Way as part of the 1970 and the 1982 updated village master plans to prevent potentially provide access through to Windmill Lane. In addition, when the Cooper's Farm subdivision was approved, even though the street uh, did not connect at the time because there was opposition um, about this was about 35, 40 years ago, um, it did mandate as a condition of the subdivision that a portion of land be dedicated to the village so that access could be provided if the village so needed. So the punchline is, uh, if the village gives this street away, it's really never getting it back, regardless of any future planning needs the village has in the area. You know, basically foregoing this planning facility is really a possible aesthetic benefit for hotel guests. The street removal is not necessary and a redevelopment of the site can incorporate it with a good architect and a site planner. You know, and from a public point of view, with Agawam Park and the Southampton Art Center, public parks and Job's Lane, you know, we're doing, as, as you know, some great things now in the, uh, the park for the Art Center. Um, it's really highly improbable that this will ever be a public benefit. It's really just for the hotel guests. And planning aside, um, but just looking at the configuration of the parking lot, you know, I, I really from a real estate point of view, don't understand how the proposed parking, proposed driveway and the parking lot plan is even gonna work when in peak season, 
you're adding another 47 hotel guest rooms to the 90 existing guest rooms. The developer herself said another 25 workers will be employed as well as having supply maintenance and service trucks, all which now will have to come in and out of Hill Street alone in front of First Neck Lane with zero secondary access. Usually when you expand the development, you add traffic circulation, you don't eliminate it. So in addition, how are trucks really supposed to circulate and turn around in a packed parking lot or even park for that matter? Are they supposed to park on Hill Street when they're doing the maintenance or servicing uh, the hotel? And you know, also what about fire uh, con and safety considerations? So all things uh, I believe the board should continue. So as such, uh, concluding, you know, I would respectfully ask uh, the board that given the number of significant issues that I believe you should not grant the special use permit requested in the plan presented, but really should have further study on this and ultimately receive a plan that works as to use the site and the building plan and how the site and Viridian Way become incorporated intelligently into the overall master plan and not in isolation before you consider uh, this application. You know, it's a six acre site with a public street uh, located it right next to the village core. You know, given the size of the development and its location, it's really critical we get this right. And I know it's a nice plan with green in it, but we have a saying in the real estate uh, business uh, when we invest, you know, um, what looks good from far away is often uh, far from good. So I'd leave you with that and thank you again uh, for letting me have the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much, Rob. It was great to hear from you and thank you for all the good work you're doing with the Southampton Arts Center uh, and for your uh, participation tonight. You definitely made a lot of good points. So thank you again. Uh, thank you again also, um, for all of your for all of your points. So, uh, with that said, we do have additional uh, attendees with their hands raised. I did see Dee Dee, so we do want to give her a chance to respond if if she puts her hands back up. But uh, in the interim, we'll wait for that, and then we have Jacob who would like to uh, to participate. So Jacob uh, and Kat, we could let Jacob in and thank you again. And there's Jacob, asked to unmute. Hi, Jacob. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Good to see everyone. And nice to uh, hear Robert as well. <laughs> um, so I, th um, I think my perspective is um, uh, alluding to what Robert had mentioned is um, overall, it looks like an interesting plan. I do respect Didi. We, my company uses Southampton Inn. We'll be there tomorrow. Uh, in fact, uh, staying over the weekend as well. I've been in the village of Southampton now for over 30 years and had the honor of not only being part of the Viridian family, but also uh, when Moon passed on being on the village planning board. So I think this question of elevating a four-star hospitality brand has been going on for quite some time. In fact, I was involved in it with George Smergin when at the time I was trying to get uh, the Fairmont group to come in because unlike Palm Beach, the village of Southampton, like uh, Rob was alluding to, really lacked a four-star brand that we rightly deserved. I mean, we're a prominent village. Uh, however, uh, be that as it may, I think the Southampton Inn serves a very important purpose in the village. I think Dee Dee's uh, layout is an interesting layout. It does need to be studied by way from traffic practicality, hazard practicality, but from open green space application, uh, environmental application, I think it does require further review. What caught my attention about it was this is a transformational opportunity for our village to make Hill Street a true gateway. Um, there's been two challenges in the village, and I am thankful to the village board for bringing it up because it's been a 30 year conversation uh, in the village. And that was, you know, branding a good hospitality 
uh, adaptive reuse, which is what Didi is doing, and um, rightly also serving the need of age in place, people in my age group who want to downsize from the four or 5,000 square foot homes and creating affordable rental housing. So the way I'm looking at it is an opportunity, and we are actually interviewing one of the prominent Peconic AIA design firms to look over Didi's plan and also recommend a, an adjoined uh, two 25,000 square foot uh, age in place affordable housing plans at the movie theater site as well. So I see this as a overall long-term strategic opportunity for the village to serve two purposes from a hospitality aspect, open green space aspect and adjoining the two acre site of 43 Hill Street. I've been in conversations with the owner but I think what I'm looking for as a developer and an engineer is would, as the village is reviewing this permitting plan, Didi's permitting plan, is there an openness to consider in a joint design plan to really serve a residential need in the village as well at 43 Hill Street as well? And we've baked in cost design to buy the property uh, start to create an eco-friendly design scheme as well. And based on our understanding of the zoning, we can fit about 80 units in both age in place and affordable uh, one bedroom rental uh, assets to the tune around 900 square feet. So I think that's what I wanted to plant to see to the Village Board of Trustees this evening is as you're looking uh, to this rather uh, catalyst design by Didi, because she actually stepped up and did what a lot of us have been thinking about for over two, three decades now, is she's looking to do an adaptive reuse, step up some upscale hospitality. Look, we don't have the luxury right now, and with all, and I respect Robert, and he and I are in the development engineering construction space, you know, if we were ever going to get a, a Fairmont or a four-star brand in the last 30 years, we would have had it by now. Because in the past conversations, it was creating a joint lots when the White family was still alive that owned the Village Latch, which is now becoming yet another condo McMansion development. Uh, so we lost that opportunity a while ago uh, to do 120, 140 unit four-star brand hospitality. I think DD is trying to address with what she has in her site, but to Robert's point, addressing the fact of hazards, traffic hazard, open greenery is, is a valid point. But what I'm also presenting is we have a very unique opportunity now as the village is revisiting again the sewage plan design. Again, that's been going on for 20 years to really do something magnificent, adjoining 71, 91 and 43 Hill Street to address the composition of issues for the residents of Southampton Township and the village of affordable housing, age in place, as well as upscale hospitality. And that's what I wanted to share. And that's something that we are looking to cost in and bring a design plan to the uh, village trustees as well as you're reviewing Didi's plan. And that's what I wanted to share with everyone. And I think to Didi's credit, uh, she took the lead. You know, we've been quietly thinking about this for a lot of years. Uh, so creating this a joint plan, I think, is something rather unique that in the end, if done right, will be very well received. Thank you very much, Jacob. We appreciate the, uh, the comments. Uh, well said. Uh, we'd like to know if there's anyone uh, else, uh, any attendees who'd like to uh, join as a panelist uh, to uh, participate in the public comment. And uh, just a friendly reminder, we see Tom Edmonds, good to see you. Uh, we uh, did not mention at the beginning of our public commentary that uh, traditionally uh, we, we limit uh, comment to approximately three minutes. Uh, so just wanted to uh, just say a friendly reminder, uh, starting with you know Tom about uh, the three minutes that we typically uh, have here. So uh, Tom, uh, Andrew, uh, you're on mute. I can see you moving your lips. Uh, is there anything you wanted to say? Okay, uh, Tom, thank you uh, very much. Uh, this was uh, a really great meeting. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, I'm here to support DD God Health and the Southampton Inn who's done a lot to support the not-for-profits. 
in the village and I'm not sure we need a more expensive hotel. Uh, Dee Dee's done a great service. She's uh, provided free rooms for artists, writers, uh, for performers. Um, I don't know that a big four star hotel would do that. I think Jacob's comments uh, made a lot of sense and I hope we can work this out. I don't think just stopping the project will help anything. Dee Dee's put her heart and soul in this. And that's all I wanna say. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. It's good to see you as always. We'll see if there's anyone else uh, who'd like to join in. Thanks again, Tom. You're doing a great job at the uh, Southampton History Museum, so we really appreciate it. Uh, we have Didi here, so Didi will let you in. Thank you very much, Kat. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let me just ask her to unmute. There we go. There you go, Didi. Welcome. Thank you. Um, am I, is there a camera here? Okay, I'll ask you to start your camera. Maybe you can't. Oh, talk. start video. There you go. All right. Thank you. Um, so uh, thank you very much for the comments from Robert and from Jacob and from, certainly from Tom and everyone else. Um, I don't think in, in 45 years of working that I've ever been called Frankenstein. Um, and I was thinking about this more in terms of being a Cinderella project. So with that in mind, um, I, I would wonder if it would be helpful just for 30 seconds to show the site plans or is everybody pretty familiar with what I'm trying to do here? Um, I guess just, just to me having been involved with, owned and partially run for the, the last decade, the Southampton Inn, I see it as, um, you know, it, it's charming in terms of being a resort. The resort is our village. Um, even if you have six acres or three and a half acres or the 71 Hill Street, Street site is two acres, this isn't going to be a 40 or 140 acre property with all of the bells and whistles and amenities that other properties and other places might offer in the terms of four and five star arenas. But it's a way to bring tourism into our village, which we know from the Business Revitalization Committee, we know from our neighbors that we, I think, seriously do need people on a year round basis to visit us and to go to the cultural institutions and dine when we're permitted to do that safely again and to to shop again when we're able to do that safely again. And so I think it's a really good opportunity to utilize the site at the moment that, I don't wanna call it Frankenstein, but we don't need tertiary commercial space within our village as much as we need workforce housing, rental housing, and additional tourism. So with a very tight site, and I would certainly welcome comments from from planners, from planning commission. I have been doing this for a long time um, by way of, I don't know whether people know, I have done over a billion dollars in real estate development over my career, which is a lot longer than others, um, including being the head of planning for about 14 cities in New York state for the Urban Development Corporation back during the 1980s. Um, and I see this as a classic example of being able to take a fairly old site plan with a lot of blacktop and north-south circulation and convert it into something that is just much more appealing, like the Frankenstein to the Cinderella. Um, and I, I think the, the site plan, the building will be pretty. There's no question that whatever is going on now is something that will be discussed. We'll have architectural review board. We will have planning board in terms of circulation. There's no question that emergency vehicles are going to have to be able to have clear access through. We have very little trucking. Um, I, I guess when we order dozens of beach towels for our guests, that would be a drop off from UPS, but otherwise it, it's not much delivery. And it's a way of, of increasing the product that we now have to something that's a little bit more on a year round basis. It's got separate living room, a little kitchen area, hopefully fireplaces in the living room, 
Each one of these units will have a balcony or a patio that will look out over what I'm hoping to create a, a 55,000 square foot green space, more than an acre between the old Southampton Inn and this new product. Management is in place. No, it's not branded, it's not franchised, and it's not chained. I think that's a good thing because I don't think our village is franchised or chained or, or, um, or flagged. I think it's an opportunity for the inn to hire locally, to work with the local community, to reflect the local history and the culture and the very special qualities that our village and that Moon Viradian have brought to Southampton over the years. I've been coming out, my parents bought a house in 1951. And so quietly I've been in Southampton for, I can't tell you how many years, but a really long time. And I've seen how it grows and I cling on to all of the wonderful historical aspects of the village and the, and the beautiful nature. And that's what we want our, our tri-state area and even international tourists when it becomes safe again and people from other states to visit, to enjoy, to spend money, to support the economy and to have a really great experience. Um, on the plan, um, it's 46 hotel suites. And in addition, it's taking the two buildings that are currently on Hill Street with the clock tower. It's not changing them in any way, but the use is all commercial. They are mostly filled at the moment, but I think we can do better. I think that I can create two workforce housing units on the top floors of both building E, which was the old Merrill Lynch or the old Bill Roy and Bosch or the old Chinese restaurant, depending on how far back you go. And on the other building where we used to have a mortgage brokerage firm, we can create another two houses. So four workforce housing units on the tops. And then we would take the second floor of what we call building F and that can be converted as tenants leases come up for renewal. We can make that into 900 to I guess it's 845 to 925, no, I'm sorry, 845 to 1100 square foot apartments, which would be lovely. And then on the ground floors, it's 6,060 square feet remaining as commercial space. Um, it need, it, village, village business zoning isn't going to permit the workforce housing, residential and hospitality, which is why we need this um, uh, special permit. And for the Viradian way, I, I differ with Rob respectfully. I, I think it's, it has been a driveway for the Southampton Inn. Um, I think it's still Viradian way. It still honors Moon Viradian and the family and all the wonderful things that they've done. But the northern part of it is used for Uber drivers. It's used for skateboarders. It's, it's not it doesn't go anywhere. And I don't know that it will ever go anywhere. And I also spoke to the planning commission and was told it was a plan abandoned during the eighties. And then it discussed again in the nineties. If there's a use for it, I totally agree. But I think creating this amount of green space, another acre of park to supplement the Southampton Art Center and the History Museum and Agawam Park and you know, make Southampton Village into a fabulous, destination resort as a village, not only as this little property. I'm sorry, that was more than three minutes. I apologize, but I'll take questions. Thank you very much, Didi. As we said at our last meeting, you've been um, instrumental in uh, making our, uh, our business district vibrant and basically providing uh, a great, uh, great place for our residents and guests to stay, taking a great lead during the pandemic by housing doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals. So we always want to acknowledge you and thank you when you're here. Uh, and we want to see if there's any additional people, any additional residents or, or viewers here that have any questions for Didi during this public hearing, or if there's any questions or comments from the board. Uh, Jesse, I don't see any hands up at this time. Okay. Mayor, Mayor, uh, can you see the plan on the screen? We can. It looks good. Thank you. I know. Uh, I know Jane had um, requested that uh, that we put it up. So we can leave that there for uh, for viewers to see for a few more moments. And uh, this plan uh, could also be provided uh, to anybody, any residents who ask for it. It's uh, public information. And so anyone could uh, email us at Village Hall and request a copy of this. 
and we would. Can have I also? You know, I have no issues also trying to go back to what we've been trying to do for 20 years, which is to create some sort of a master plan. Um, it just hasn't happened, and I need to fix the buildings up and leave them, or we need to move move forward with something that I'm hoping will be the catalyst for being able to work with other potentially available sites within the village. Um, we can share. I'd, I'd love to be able to do that. So again, this is not a fait accompli right now, but it's trying to march through the process. Thank you very much again, Didi. Uh, to, our, uh, to our board, what, what I would maybe suggest, but what I'd like to hear from Ken, we have a resolution later on in the suggested resolution section. It could make sense to, to close this because we likely have, uh, have to re-notice this. We can get to that in the resolution section, but just some food for thought for the board and Ken, you know, when we get to that resolution, we'd, we'd love your, uh, your thoughts and, and comments there. But just- Certainly, kind of absolutely. Okay, well, if, um, if so I would like to, uh, now that this is open, I would like to, uh, uh, to close it as we move to the resolution section. So I just wanna make sure that the board is okay with that. We can adjourn it as well, but I think uh, Ken, you would recommend closing this, and then again because we have to re-notice it. Well, well, I wouldn't recommend uh, necessarily closing it. I think you can continue it uh, with a re-noticing, so that this transcript remains part of the record on the ongoing hearing, uh, and then we'll re-notice it for the other purposes. Um, but then this board is going to need to make a decision, and you may not want to do it tonight right now on whether or not you, the board, want to be lead agency, or if you want to discuss it with maybe the chairman of the planning board to see if it's more appropriate for them to take over lead agency. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you, Ken. So I, if you would uh, agree, or we could uh, basically adjourn this, we'll keep it open, not for our, our, uh, our work session, but for the next, in, next uh, public, the first, public meeting in March, which will give us some time to notice this as well. So it'll be the March 11th meeting. Okay. Correct. All right. So uh, with that said, we'd like to make a motion to adjourn this to our Mar March 11th meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Shirley, and there's communications to the board. I'll let you give a quick, quick summary of them. We also sure. have, um, we have section, so we can actually this, the, 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 the Southampton Soccer Club has requested the, requested the use of down of the Downs Family Park for spring, summer, and fall soccer programs from March 22nd uh, to December 5th of 2021. Um, there is a resolution later in uh, the on the agenda to approve that. Uh, item number two, the squash court. There was a, also a request um, from the summer. Uh, for the to use uh, Dosher, Dosher Park for the summer squash program. However, I was informed by uh, Gary Gillespie today that we need approval from the town of Southampton because it is a CPF property. So we're going to table that to the next meeting. Thank you very much, Charlene. Uh, next is our suggested resolution. So uh, we'll let you uh, take it from here. Okay. Thank you very much. Hold on one second. Oh, I do have this here. Okay, great. Um, resolution number one, resolved that the claims for the warrant dated February 11th, 2021, totaling, I have the warrant right here, um, $842,008.45 warrant A14 general fund be audited and approved. Do we have a motion? Make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Resolution number two, that the reading of the minutes of the public session and special session of be disposed of, be disposed of with and with those minutes be accepted and filed by the village administrator and that the actions taken at that meeting be and hereby are ratified and approved. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, resolution number three, which is attacked, uh, attached in the handout, um, resolved that the Board of Trustees authorize the budget amendment number three, uh, 306 attached to various funds, uh, to fund various employee benefit COVID related expenses totaling $54,125. Um, do we have a motion? Motion. 
Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, I resolution number four is going to be tabled at this point in time. Correct. Thank you. Do we need a resolution to table? No. Okay. Uh, resolution number five, uh, resolution number 20, this uh, resolved that resolution number 21 adopted by the Board of Trustees at the November 12th, 2020 meeting approving transfer from the fire capital reserve account for equipment be amended as follows. Um, for uh, subject to permissive referendum. Fire Chief's vehicle, um, the previous request was a total of, uh, for the vehicle of $80,000. Um, the vehicle was actually purchased from, uh, but was found at Buzz Chu on a um, New York State contract for a savings of uh, just over $6,000. Um, so uh, the vehicle will be in the following components. Uh, for the fire truck, we will have uh, a Chevrolet Silverado in the amount of $40,083, Island Tech Services for a mobile computer in the amount of $3,866, Integrated Services for Lights, Siren, and the Console, $28,714.49. For unit number 7-3-16 ladder truck, uh, there is a a request for uh, $2,400 for integrated wireless for a radio. And then there is a request for $7,800 for steel plate protectors for two brush trucks from Liberty Ironworks. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Resolved that the Board of Trustees appoint Derek Highsmith as 90-day temporary senior office assistant in the building department at a rate of $30.77 per hour, effective February 12th, 2021. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolved that the Board of trustee here, Trustees hereby approves Roger Lelouchia to be accepted into the Southampton Fire Department effective January 26, 2021 as a probationary member for one year. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution number eight, resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves Oscar Ramirez to be accepted into the Southampton Fire Department effective January 26, 2021 as a probationary member for one year. Do you have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution number nine, whereas to address the ongoing village water quality issues and downtown business district revitalization, the board of trustees would like to proceed with creating a sewer, uh, village sewer district. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the board of trustees hereby creates the Southampton Village Sewer District Task Force be, be created for the purpose of uh, advising and making recommendations to the village board on matters relating to the to and selecting an engineering firm to design and for the design formation of the village sewer district and be it further resolved that the following members be appointed. Paul Travis, chair, Len Zinanti, Ed Moneypenny, Janice Shearer, Bob Varadian, Megan Majar, Mayor Warren, Trustee McLaughlin, Charlene Cagle Betts, Village Administrator. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Resolution number 10, whereas the, the New York State Green Innovation Grant Program provides grants on a competitive basis to projects that improve water quality and mitigate the effects of climate change through practices including green stormwater infrastructure, energy efficiency, and water efficiency. And whereas GIGP funding is provided through the Clean Water State Revolving Fund and is, and is it administered by the New York State 
New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation, EFC. And whereas the village of Southampton intends to request GIGP funding for the Old Town Pond Green Infrastructure Project for the purpose of installing a constructed treatment wetland in the Old Town Pond watershed area. And whereas the village of Southampton is eligible to apply for up to 90% of eligible costs. And whereas on behalf of the village, RU Environmental Engineering and Geology, DPC, Rue has prepared uh, the conceptual design plan, feasibility study, and short environmental assessment form, parts one, two, and three, pursuant to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act, which identified no potential for significant adverse impacts and recommended that the village board adopt a negative declaration. And whereas the estimated cost of the project is $981,700. Now, therefore be it resolved that the village board of the village of Southampton hereby states its support of the water quality improvement project at Old Town Pond and authorizes the mayor or his designee to sign any and all documents related to the grant and be it further resolved that the village will request 90% of eligible project costs up to an estimated $883,530 in GIGP funding and providing a 10% matching share estimated at $98,170 and be it further resolved that the village board accepts the secret do uh, documentation prepared by Rue and adopts a negative declaration. Do we have a motion? Motion. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Question. Quick discussion. Just, Just um, thank you. Just wanna make sure that, do we know what the costs will be um, prior to us potentially receiving the grants, are we going to be utilizing our 10% matching share of the 98,000 if costs come out before, or are we waiting for the grants before any of this work commences? I, oh, okay. I can write a little color in. Ahead, Mayor. <laughs> uh, Shirley, uh, my, uh, my, my take on this, and would love to hear from Shirley as well, and start for uh, jumping in there quickly. Uh, the work that was needed to be done in order to request this grant um, was previously uh, done by Rue engineers. They did the, uh, the groundwater and the, um, uh, the, uh, the Old Town Pond water study. And we uh, resolved that actually uh, tonight in the first resolution uh, to pay them for the work that was done. Uh, so this is the approximate um, cost of the, the work, the $981,700. And then we're hoping it, we'll, we'll see if we get the grant. We hope we do. The Green Innovation Grant Program is a great grant program by New York State. So the estimated cost that we'll owe if we do get the grant would be the 98000 But we also hope to go to the uh, the CPF Water Quality Fund and obtain funding there. So perhaps we can have the whole thing covered. But this is, um, again, this is the uh, the estimated matching share. I hope that helps. But if it doesn't, I'm sure Charlene could also jump in. That that helps with on, on the funding. My question is, is work going to start before the grant is received so that we are going to, to incur costs of the 98,000. I understand that all the work done to date in preparing it is now being paid for from tonight's resolution. Is other work going to start on these projects that will incur costs or are we waiting until the funding comes in before we go ahead with those? Because what, in, in my mind, we're, we're willing to put up close to $100,000 out of 981, I would hate for us to start spending all that money um, and then start going down it, realize we don't get the grant and we've already sunk 100,000 into it. And then where do we get the other funding? And, and the village you know, might wanna see this work completed and then there's a larger cost to the village. So I just wanna try and gauge a timeline on commencing of work. Um, Trustee Pilar, I believe that the GIGP grant funding is a reimbursement grant fund uh, program where we would have to, um, the village would have to outlay the, the, the funds initially, but we would not begin to do that until we got the grant approved. And I don't believe most of the, um, the grants that come through DEC do not permit you to spend um, the project funding before you have a signed contract. Charlene, that is correct. If, if you spend any of the money before you have the signed contract, it will not be part of the reimbursable funds. Perfect. That's that's sentence says it all. Thank, Thank you. you, Ken. 
And thank you, uh, Trustee Pilaro, for the question. Please. And then also, while we're on the discussion, I just wanted to thank uh, Rob Coburn from the, the Clean Water Committee. You know, he was very active on this, and he's also been uh, out trying to get uh, private donations as well, not just for this project in case we need it, but also for other projects for Old Town. So they've been very active and just wanted to give Rob a quick, uh, quick mention here for his efforts. So now we need a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Resolution number 11, resolve that the Board of Trustees authorized the Southampton Soccer Club Limited to use the Downs Family Park for their 2021 soccer program from March 22nd to December 5th, 2021. Oh, do we have a motion? Motion. Motion. A second. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, resolution number 12 is going to be tabled till the next meeting, till we have an opportunity to speak to the town uh, CPF fund coordinator. Um, and that was regarding the squash program. Uh, resolution number 13, uh, the board of trustees hereby acknowledges and accepts a donation of carpet installed in the village clerk's office from Robert Gill of Carpet One valued at $3,800. Um, do we have a motion? Motion. Second. And I would like to thank uh, the, the, the folks from Carpet One because they saw that we were doing some minor improvements in-house and painting in the village clerk's office and putting up some new lighting. And uh, both uh, Kathy and Mimi have taken the charge on redecorating the office a little bit and making it look a little brighter in here. And uh, we got this generous donation of carpet. So it's very nice. Um, all in favor? Sorry, quick question. Sure. Just on that. Um, with the install and whatever, do we need to split out? And Ken, maybe you can, do we need to split out the install cost versus the carpet cost or can it be all combined as one? And again, thank you, Robert Gill from Carpet Man to, for the, you know, I, one. I, make sure that I just don't know if we need to split out sometimes when it comes to this type of stuff, at least in some of the other charitable stuff wrong. that I do, you need to split out what the cost of the actual carpet is versus the cost of the installation. I, I, I don't believe you need to split anything out. I think you can just accept the accept the donation and uh, and say thank you. Perfect. Thank you. That's definitely it's, ca it's carpet man. <laughs> carpet man. Carpet man. Yes, I actually had the wrong agenda. <laughs> <laughs> we caught that early on. <laughs> yes, we definitely wanted to thank uh, Robert Gill for his uh, generous donation. Carpet man. <laughs> yes, carpet man. Robert Gill, the carpet man. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, that concludes our resolution agenda. Oh, I think we we have to uh, vote on that, correct? Oh, yes, we do. Yes. We to thank All in favor. Charlene, he just took it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> All in favor. Bye. Bye. Okay, uh, the next portion is the comments from uh, board members as we go okay. to conclude our meeting tonight. Uh, so we're in alphabetical order. So first is uh, Trustee Aresta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to thank our uh, Department of Public Works, the whole team for doing such a great job getting the, uh, the snow off the street. So everyone was able to travel safely. Uh, I think it was two snowstorms already, or maybe two and a half if you wanted to count this morning. And uh, uh, just a reminder that when it does snow, uh, please re get your cars off the street and anything uh, that's in the right of way has to be off of the right of way um, because we are not responsible if uh, a plow hits something that uh, is something that shouldn't be where it is. So uh, just re please remember to, uh, to do that. And, um, and that's it. I hope everybody's uh, well. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Next is uh, Trustee McLaughlin. Thank you, Mayor. So I, I, I too would like, would like to thank uh, DPW for all the hard work. It's a lot to, to uh, snow plow, and especially in the, in the winter. Obviously, it's uh, time consuming for our uh, overtime and for our workers. So th thank you for all, all the hard work. Also, I want to um, take a minute to uh, welcome Ken to the team. Thank you for, uh, for uh, taking on this opportunity to, uh, to assist us in our, in our legal matters. So thank you and welcome. Thank you very much. And also, I want to also thank uh, 
Bob Gill for his don for his uh, generous donation to the uh, village. The carpet and last but not least, I want to uh, welcome Derek Heisman back to the village as a, a clerk in the building department. He previously worked with us, uh, I believe, two years ago, and he is now coming back to us. So I want to welcome him back and uh, wish him luck in his new position. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee McLaughlin. Uh, next is Trustee Parrish. Good evening, and yes, DPW, good work on the snow. Um, also, Derek, welcome. Good to have you back. Ken, thanks for uh, stepping in so quickly and catching up. I appreciate it. And more importantly, just uh, a little bit of thought for the board going forward with the governor allowing um, people to attend sports um, events starting the 23rd. Might be a good opportunity to start talking about getting back into in-person meetings in, in March. You know, they're allowing a certain number for sporting events inside. So if uh, this board wants to start chewing on that over the next few weeks, it'd be something that I think would be really good for us to get back in person and, you know, give the, the residents and people to come on in and start, you know, talking to us and sharing with us what they're saying. And that is it. Have a good night. Thank you, Trustee Parrish. Uh, Trustee Pilaro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, um... I'll echo the beginnings as, as everyone else, DPW, Ken and Derek, uh, welcome. Um, and really from my, from my other standpoint, uh, you know, we're starting to see numbers come down, but it doesn't mean don't be village vi vigilant uh, when everything we know that uh, indoor dining is starting in New York. We've, had, we've seen it here for a while, um, but we still need to keep doing what we're doing so that we can keep the numbers down. Thank you, uh, Trustee Pilaro. Um, I just wanted to echo uh, everyone's uh, thoughts. Uh, first and foremost, uh, to thank our Department of Public Works. They were uh, up early, 4 a.m. or so, uh, making sure that our streets were salted, sand, and plowed. Uh, when uh, Gene and I were going through some of the purchase orders, we saw purchase orders for uh, tons, I mean, literally 10, 10 20, 30 tons of, of, uh, of salt. So uh, we're putting our village dollars to, to good use this winter. Um, we heard the farmer's almanac had requested, a, had said it was going to be a bad winter and January came and went and we didn't see it, but here, here it is. Uh, it's usually pretty, pretty accurate. So again, just wanted to give a shout out to our Department of Public Works and then offer a, um, another thank you to Rob and, and Mark of the, uh, the Planning Commission. Uh, they've done a lot of work uh, on our planning for a sewer. And so we formed our task force tonight. And uh, while uh, they are not part of it, uh, they have uh, great hands and have continued to do work both on the Clean Water Committee and the Planning Commission, respectively. Uh, this is a bit uh, um, dated, but still very pertinent. Um, wanted to thank uh, Officer uh, Matthew uh, Stetler, uh, one of our patrol officers uh, who uh, was responsible for saving a life a few weeks ago. So wanted to give him also a uh, much deserved thank you for his good work. He's one of our newest officers. We're able to meet each other uh, when he was a, a summer officer handing out noise violations and I thank him for that too. And uh, he did a great job a few weeks ago. Uh, wanted to echo uh, Mark and Gene and Joe's uh, uh, shout out to Derek Highsmith. We're very happy to have him back on board. And then lastly, just wanted to give our, our board uh, some food for thought. Um, we've got a lot of people calling us up uh, regarding uh, vaccines and uh, we are in budget season and I know uh, Charlene is working extremely hard on the budget and also wanted to recognize her for that. And so whether it's in now or in our upcoming budget, it could make sense for an extra uh, administrative or assistant level person to help us answer phones. Uh, we are working overdrive in the clerk's office. Uh, we know that we keep our village hall very lean, um, but it, it is likely time for some extra help uh, to take some of that uh, work off of Charlene's shoulders. And actually, I would be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Miranda uh, because she has been working very diligently um, helping some of our seniors uh, who are not as computer literate as the rest of our population uh, reach out and, and get some vaccines when they call us. So she's been working overdrive. Uh, I know she was in today with one of our residents uh, on uh, the Walgreens uh, website uh, trying to get uh, one of our seniors uh, vaccinated in either Bridgehampton or West Hampton. So wanted to give her uh, a thank you as well. And that is all my comments tonight. Thank you to our board for a good meeting. Uh, kept it uh, 90 minutes, which is nice. 
And uh, that said, would like to make a motion to adjourn to executive session. Mayor, we do not have any items for exec session tonight. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Okay.